For this episode, I had a particular encounter in mind. It involves a necromancer and a ring of obelisks that hunger for blood. So that's what I'm going to make today. To start, we're going to mark out a whole bunch of 4 inch strips from craft foam. We'll measure out the height of these and then use the thickness of the ruler to mark out the thickness of the sides. You'll need 4 per piece, and since I want 4 pieces, I cut out 16 strips. I wanted there to be a section surrounding the obelisk, so I marked out a 5 inch strip and divided this into 4 5 inch squares, which I then cut out. Next, I did exactly the same thing with some 3 inch squares. They are going to sit on top of the 5 inch squares so the minis will have a couple of steps to go up. Now we can cut out the strips. Once this is done, measure, then cut out a strip of 1 quarter of an inch from two sides of every obelisk. If you've seen my video on crates and boxes, you know why, but if not, this is to take into account the thickness of the foam and to ensure the cross section remains square. Add a bead of hot glue to the side of one of the thinner pieces of foam. Line it up and glue to the edge of one of the thicker strips. Repeat with the second thin strip and then lastly, add hot glue to the tops of these two and place the final side on top. Once all this is done, use the nib to smooth down any bumps and bubbles left over. From here we can draw our grid onto the two base tiles. I drew them on pretty heavily, removed the paper, then followed these lines with an X-Acto knife. I then used the tip of a mechanical pencil to widen the lines. I cut out the middle section of the larger base, and then the central square of the 3 inch. This way the obelisk can pressure fit and stay upright. Now it's just a matter of hot gluing the smaller on top of the larger, and we're done with this part. I cut out a 1 inch thick strip of card and marked out 1 inch squares. I also marked the midway points of these squares and used them to line up my scissors, cutting triangles all the same size and all with a base one inch wide. Apologies for the angle here, my hands kept getting in the way and this was the only one that worked. Use hot glue to stick down the triangles. You'll have to angle the first two in, but the others will be glued directly to them. The glue will add strength and fill in any holes left over. This is a little tricky, but it gets very easy very quick. Now we can start to add some detail. Draw on some cracks, cut along the lines with an X-Acto knife, and again widen with a mechanical pencil. I wanted to keep the paint job simple on this, so I decided on a plain black. I'm making these for an encounter with a necromancer, so I stippled on a dark red so it looks like the stone is bleeding. Once all this was dry, I got a tub of gloss finish Mod Podge, and I coated all four pillars. This stuff dries clear, but be careful. If it pools, it can get milky, so use a couple of thin coats. I base coated and detailed the bases off camera. I let them dry and I mixed up a dark and a light grey. Using my trusty scourer sponge, I stippled on a coat of each, first the darker, I left this to sit, and then a coat of the lighter. I was a little heavy handed with the light grey here, so I added some flocking to break it up further. Now it's ready for the table. So here's the scene. The party's walking through the forest. They come upon a clearing with four stone obelisks that a necromancer is using to increase his power. Seeing the party could be trouble, he raises a band of undead, helps secure his newest blood sacrifice. 
Roll initiative. So there we are. Four simple obelisks made with three colors, some cardstock, some foam board, and a little bit of flocking. As usual with my projects, this took the bones of an afternoon and most of my time was just waiting for paint to dry, waiting for Mod Podge to dry. I'll leave a link to my boxes and crates tutorial below so you can go over some of those techniques in a little more detail. So thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to see me make something specific in the future, leave a comment and subscribe to see what Fig makes next.